nakalagyan. Kaya natatawa yung yung mga yung aking mga anak kasi pag minsan nakikita nila kung saan-saan nakalagay yung mga damit ko, yung mga, diba? may, 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 na, may, mayroon term sa sa akin yung nanay ko nung bata pa ako. Sabi niya para daw kong ahas. Kasi kung saan ako naghubad, nandun yung aking pinaghubaran. Yung mga ganun, no? Ah, uh, pag minsan ganun pa rin ako. I'm trying to do my best, no? But you know, there's disorders when there's a mess, when there's na what is supposed to be in a place and it's not in a pro proper position. Or probably um when this there is disorder when one tries to put a 48-hour work in a 24-hour schedule. Kaya ngayon maraming may sakit because they're trying to put in more things. In, in, in a time when, there's, when they can only do half of it. Diba? Kaya ang tawag natin dun ngayon ay stress. Pero actually, if you're going to look at it, it is actually disorder. Because ano, ano ang common reason for people not being able to fulfill their commitments? Hindi ka naka-attend na meeting o late ka. Busy eh. Diba? But busy is actually an alibi for saying that kasi yung trabaho kong dapat ginagawa ko ng tatlong araw, ginawa ko lang kanina, yung overtime ako. So I did it in three hours. But that is what busy is all about. But if you're going to really look at things, the reason why you want to do something is because it is essential. For example, if you're attending an action group meeting, is that important or not? If it is important, then you cannot be late. Right? Because it is important. If you have a meeting with your boss, you cannot be late because it is important. But why is it that when you have a prayer meeting or you have an action group meeting, you can be late because you are not putting your time in its, you're not using your time in a proper order. In other words, there is disorder in the way we are doing things. And so, if we want to look at this order, uh, uh, an order, uh, we want to define it like a condition where there is a place for everything and everything in its proper is it is in the proper place. So that's what order is all about. Nasa lugar ang tawag natin sa Tagalog. Kung ano ang dapat na nandito, dapat nasa lugar. Or a condition in which there is a methodical, proper and a harmonious arrangement or disposition of things. Di ba? Yung, lala, yung pinggan, nasa lalagyan ng pinggan. Hindi medyas yung nakalagay sa lalagyan ng pinggan. Yung ganon, di ba? And so on and so forth. That is what we mean by order. You know, a condition where things are, uh, things are in its proper place. Now, the way I'd like to present now is this. No? I'm going to, um, let, me, let me go back here a bit. Um, the way I'd like to present now is because at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, if I'm going to speak here for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to give you 20 minutes and probably some of you will either be asleep or absent. Okay? So what we're going to do now is, uh, I'm not going to give the, the, the presentation straightforwardly, but I'm going to ask you. So pag natitigan kita, ibig sabihin maliit yung mata mo. Ba, ganyan, di ba? So tititigan kita anong sagot. Yan, di ba? So, but seriously, I'm going to, I'd like this to be interactive because again, sabi ko nga, I'm a work in progress as far as order is concerned. And I'm sure many of you are a lot better off than I am in this, in this point. So we'd like to share this with one another. We'd like to make sure that, we'd like to make sure that uh, uh, we share with one another what the Lord has given us. Okay ba yun? Ha, humihingi ako ng permiso sa inyo na tawagin ko kayo ha, at magsalita kayo. So pag nagtanong ako, yung tanong dapat sinasagot. Hindi Yan, di ba? Walang titigan, okay? Wala naman tama at maling sagot. Ba? Sabi natin kanina, there is disorder when, when things are not in its proper place. Now, in the, real, in the realm of a Christian, a servant, a disciple, or even probably a young professional like you, what do you think? is a result. What do you think results from disorder in today's life? Ano ang nangyayari when there is disorder? There is chaos, probably. Yes, there is chaos. Or what? Any other thing that happens? Doon sa pang-araw-araw nating buhay, when there's disorder, there is? There is? Misunderstanding. It causes strain in relationships. Diba? It causes strain in relationships. What else? There is, there is, excuse me, goals, goals are not met, precisely, diba? You cannot, you cannot do your thing, what you're supposed to, there's, there's inefficiency, diba? Because 
things are not being done in the way it should be done. ba? Diba? Or, ang common nga natin kanina, tulad ng nasabi ko, ay yung tawag natin ngayon na stress. When there's stress, is stress in our physical physical being, is stress in relationships. And but more importantly, and again, in the context of discipleship, is stress or rather not being able to do the work that God wants us to do. Not being able to do the work that God wants us to do. For example, brothers and sisters, you as disciples of the Lord, members of Lingkod ng Panginoon, okay, how many of you actually have a daily schedule written down? Right. Di ba? Madali na ngayon. Why? Because of technology. Correct? But how many of us are faithful to that schedule? That is another thing. Now, I will not react on. Okay? So, anxiety or loss of confidence or failure to fulfill our commitments. That is what it is all about. So brothers and sisters, as Christians, and you're talking of our way of life, our way of life in Lingkod is that we are faithful to our commitments. We are faithful to our words. Nowadays, brothers and sisters, even in the corporate world, traffic is not anymore an excuse for being absent or late, right? It is not anymore an excuse because wherever you go, there is traffic and you know there is traffic. When kapag traffic ang rason mo, unless may nag, may nag, may, unless sumabog yung kalahati ng EDSA habang nagbabiyahe ka, hindi mo na excuse na matraffic ang EDSA. Kasi ginawa ang EDSA talaga para maging matraffic eh. Di ba? Alam na natin yon. So there's no excuse. And every time that we, we, we are unable to fulfill our commitments, my brothers and sisters, you are doing a great disservice to the brothers and sisters. If you are not present when you meet when you come together, you are not doing a service. You are not loving enough. That is the result of disorder. Failure to love, failure to show and express your love, failure to show, and, to show the honor and respect. Coming on time, diba, is part of honor and respect. Fulfilling your commitment is part of honor and respect. But when there is disorder, you cannot fulfill it. And that is the result of disorder. Okay, now, in the work, in the corporate world, we want to put order in our life because gusto nating i-please yung boss natin, right? But in the Christian life, we want to have order in our life because we want to please the Lord, because we want to be more and more like the Lord. Now, why is order important in our lives? Sabi nga natin kanina, sa opisina, we want to put order in our work because we want to please the boss, because we want to be evaluated well, dahil gusto natin mag maganda, yung, maganda yung merit natin, uh, yung, yung performance natin para mas maganda yung merit increase natin, and so on and so forth. In our Christian life, order is important not only because of the, but not only because we want to please God, but primarily because we want to be like God. God is a God of order. I was talking to, I was talking to a child and said, uh, what was the first thing that God created? And the child says, God created the light. Oh, very good, right? Why did God create the light first? Well, because God will not see what He's doing if there's no light. May katwira nga naman siya. Piniloso po kasi ako ng But God is God. He can see in the darkness. And sabi niya ganun, Yes, but the cow that He will create will not see what they are eating. So God has to create the light first. Diba? So even before in God's creation, God did it in order. There is order in the way God did things or does things even now. And my brothers and sisters, we were created with the same, with the light, in the likeness of God and we were created in order. There is a reason for, the thing, for, for how things happened. And we want order in our lives because we want to be like God. We want to imbibe the character of God. A disciple wants to be able to imbibe the character of God. In the scriptures, we call it the fruit of the Spirit. And the next thing will actually be some fruit of the Spirit. No? So, first thing is that we want to put order in our lives because that is what a disciple is all about. That is what discipleship is all about. If you profess that you want to become a disciple of God, look at your life and make sure that your life is in order. Second, 
You want to put order in your life because we want to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Saan makikita sa scriptures yung fruit of the Spirit? Deuteronomy. Wala pang Holy Spirit. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5. Okay? You want to see the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is, kanta natin yan, the love, joy, peace, no suffering, gentleness, generosity, and so on and so forth. We want to grow in order because we want to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. If you have gone through a course called the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is actually defined as the very character of God. Okay? So if you want to imbibe the character of God, look at the fruit of the Spirit. That is, those are the characters of God. Now, I'd like to mention three things to this afternoon about the very character of God that we want to grow on and also in relation to our, our, uh, our, uh, the topic of personal order. What are, the, what are the important character qualities according to Galatians 5? Let's talk about generosity. Why do you think generosity, generosity has got something to do with order? Why? Anong kinalaman ng generosity sa personal order? Sure. Personal order allows you to use your resources well and be able to give not only your time, but even your financial resources, your gifts, your talents, you're able to give it to the Lord even more. So personal order begets generosity. And brothers and sisters, no one was given less by God. No one was given less by God. All of us, for that matter, were given by God enough, or more than enough gifts and resources for us to be generous. That is why in a community like Lingkod, hindi tayo nawawala ng magsiserve. In a community like Lingkod, hindi tayo nawawala ng resources. In a community like Lingkod, hindi tayo nawawala ng talents. Pag meron tayong mga activities, pag meron tayong mga entertainment, marami tayong talents. God has given us so much that all we have to do is to use it well so that we can share. Generosity is a factor of personal order. Now, brothers and sisters, if you cannot give enough, Look at, it is not because God has given you less. It's probably because you are not using it properly. And there's not order in that area of your life that you cannot give it. One of the things that amazed me in, the, in many years that I have, I have been with brothers and sisters, marami ako nakasama sa community na nakasama ko sila when I was a student. And after our graduation, they went on to pursue medical school, medical studies, no? Alam niyo naman yung mga nagdo-doktor. Sino dito ang mga doktor? Meron ba dito ang doktor? Yung mga nagdo-doktor, di ba? Medical school is not an easy thing. Alam natin yan. No? But I've seen sisters and brothers who pursued life in the community while, doing, well, while studying in med school. And for me, that is a tremendous commitment. That shows that these sisters and brothers have actually given themselves to the Lord that not even school not even that kind of study will prevent them from serving, from giving themselves to me. That is generosity in, 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 in practice. So generosity has got something to do with how we use our resources, our talents, finances, uh, uh, our, ta our, our gifts, our, our, our time especially, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. Next, fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Personal order is equal to faithfulness. Why do you think that is so? Why do you think that is so? What does, what does personal order got to do with faithfulness? Bro, go ahead. Commitments, yes. If you have order in your life, you can commit and you can be relied upon. Right? You can all, I can rely on you because of your commitment to me, and you can fulfill your commitment because you know how to use your time well. And so again, brothers and sisters, like we are, since we are talking of our way of life, we are saying Christians know how to stand by their word, how to fulfill their commitments because they have order in their lives. 
if you cannot fulfill your commitments, then probably it's time to look at your life and ask the Lord how you are using your resources and your time in order to fulfill your commitments. Or, you should not even accept that commitment anyway, kung hindi mo kayang pangatawanan. Brothers and sisters, when I was in Lingkod, many, many years ago, of course, um, we were we were meeting then at in a in a house in a in a in a house with a big lawn, di ba? Malaking malaking lawn, and at, after that we we went to Mary the Queen. Many of you probably have gone to Mary the Queen before. Mary the Queen, uh, one of their halls there can accommodate something like 150 to to 200 people, and 200 people, medyo nakaupo na sa hagdan yung iba. And we grew to that point. No? We grew to that point. The not only not not really because ang galing galing naming mag evangelize, you know. We grow to that point because people in Lingkod at the time, and I'm sure even now that's happening. People in Lingkod, when they say we will do something, we will fulfill it. And one of our commitments to one another at the time is we want to grow in numbers because we believe that God has called a lot of people in our milus. And we want to bring them to Lingkod. Really? Wala kaming CLS noon. O wala kaming, wala kaming, ang tawag pa namin noon is CCLS. Wala kaming ECLS noon. No, na hindi bumababa kami sa isang daan. Why? Because our commitment is to evangelize. Our commitment is not to have fun. Fun is just a result of good relationships. But our commitment is to evangelize. Now, brothers and sisters, are we fulfilling that commitment to one another? Are we growing? In fulfilling that commitment. We can only do that if we are faithful. Pero well, alam mo, ang hirap na ngayon mag-evangelize mag eh. Well, kung madaling mag-evangelize ngayon, siguro mas malaki na tayo sa El Shaddai. Diba? Mahirap talaga eh. Mahirap talaga yon. Pero commitment ko yon eh. So I will do it. You can rely on me that I will do it because I am committed to that. And of course, wag na natin sabihin yung mga pag-attend ng meetings. Kasama na yan. No? But ang sinasabi natin, ano ba yung commitment natin sa lingkod? Pag pinag-usapan natin yung way of life, are we committed to our way of life? Are we, are we fulfilling that way of life, both inside and outside of lingkod? Faithfulness and, uh, and, 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 and personal order has got something to do with being able to do or to fulfill our commitments. Order increases our ability to be, to be faithful because if everything is in, is in its proper place, then the result of it will be there. The parable of the talent is one good example. Now, the servant who's got 10 was faithful to his commitment to the master to care for the talent. And that's why he was able to grow it. That is what faithfulness is all about. How about peace? Why is peace related to uh, personal order? Anong kinalaman ng personal order sa peace? Are, are disciples supposed to have the peace in their hearts? Yes. What, 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 what has got personal order to do with that? Anong kinalaman ng personal order sa peace? Nakaranas ba? Go ahead, sister. Go. Yes, of course. If you are stressed, you don't have peace. Right? If you are always stressed, you don't have peace. Kung wala ka ng pera, para wala ka ng pamasahe papunta, I'm, I'm probably caricaturing, wala ka ng pamasahe o wala ka ng panggasolina papunta sa meeting, wala kang peace. Kung kulang ang sweldo mo, wala kang peace. But peace of mind, peace of heart has got something to do on how you are using your resources. That is why, brothers and sisters, a disciple who is at peace is a disciple who uses his or her resources in its proper way. God is a God of peace. God is not a God of disorder. If there's no peace in your heart, there's something wrong with the way you are using your resources, your time, no, and your ability to, to serve the Lord. One of the things that we always say whenever a Christian, whenever uh, someone has got a concern about his life in the Lord, ang unang-una nating tinatanong ay ano? Kumusta ang iyong prayer time? And brothers and sisters, I've been in the Lord for so many years now. 
And I'm just, not that I have perfected it, but I'm so amazed on how men and women who have been long in the Lord will come up to you and say, alam mo bro, struggle ko pa rin ang prayer time. And I say, how can you grow in your love for the Lord without your prayer time? But don't tell me you cannot pray because you don't have time. Because again, if it is important for you, then you will have time for it. Then you will have time for it. Right? Let's say for example, busy, busy ka ngayon. Busy, busy ka. Ang dami mong ginagawa sa office. You stay in the office up to 7 o'clock in the evening. Nag-o overtime ka pa. You arrive in the prayer meeting just on time for the worship. Hindi ka na nakakapag-fellowship. Subukan natin. Mag-decide kang mag-aral ng MBA. Magkakaroon ka ng oras for that. Right? Why? Because you want it done. And you will sacrifice things in the office because you want it done. You will even talk to your boss and say, Boss, mag-aaral ako ng MBA, so can I actually do this? You will have time if you want it. If prayer time is important, then you will wake up in the morning to do that. Again, let me just mention to you a personal thing. When I, ever since I was young, my problem is that I am, I am a night person ever since. I am a night person. I want to stay, my, my day starts at 10, you know, in the, more, in the evening. 10 o'clock, I'm so awake. So my prayer time, even when I, was, uh, when I was in Lingkod, when I was in CYA, my prayer time is always at night. Okay? When I got married, I continued on with that thing. I always tell my leader, yeah, nakakapagdasal naman ako sa gabi. Okay ako doon. Dumating yung mga anak ko, dumami ang services ko, dumami ang meeting ko, yung gabi ko, lumiit ng lumiit. Kasi I'm normally at home at 11, normally at home at 10.30. Pagdating mo doon, may baby pa ako. Aalaga pa. Eh, kung may sakit yung baby ko. Normally, pag ganun ang oras mo, nawawalan ka ng prayer time. Prayer time mo, yung talagang Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be. Thank you, Lord. Yan ang prayer time, no? But I have to confront myself and say, this can't be. Because I want to pray and I'm missing my time with the Lord. My wife is a complete opposite. My wife's day ends at 9. Okay? So you can just imagine our, our time, no? Diba? My wife's day ends at 9. At 9 o'clock, don't talk to her on serious things. mag kami nun. And so, my decision was this. Sabi ko sa asawa ko, I have to make a decision to pray in the morning. And my wife says, talaga? Parang, may konting sarcasm yun. But I have to ask for her help. and say, really, you have to help me out because I want to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to pray because we leave, we leave the office at 6, we leave the, whole, we leave the house at 6.30. So I have to pray at 5. And my wife, in, in her support for me, ginawa niya ako ng isang prayer, ng isang corner ng prayer nook sa bahay namin na maliit. No? At binili niya ako ng special mug for my coffee kasi ang aking, ang aking condition kay Lord, Lord, magdadasal ako ng maga, but can you please allow me to have coffee while praying? So I have my special mug for my coffee and I have my special place there and I have my Bible in my nook. So I pray there in the morning. It was not easy. It took me a few months to actually do it. And suffice it to say that I have been doing that for more than eight years now. I'm praying at five o'clock in the morning. I'm still an evening person. I still, I still uh, I sleep late at night, but I wake up at five o'clock to pray. I still have my coffee. That's still part of the, the, that's still part of the agreement with the Lord, but I'm able to pray. And I thank God for that. Of course, I have to thank my wife for that, but I thank God for that. All we need is to decide that I want to do this. Brothers and sisters, if God wants it, that will be done. That will be done, and you will be able to overcome. Okay, so personal order nurtures the atmosphere of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives for us to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. And what we want to do is to become, you know, to, to, to seek the Lord and ask the Lord for help, just like what I did. And of course, the support of, well, if you don't have a spouse yet, support of your leader, no support of brothers and sisters to help you out and to pray for, uh, for you. And thirdly, you want order in your life because as we said in everything that we're saying, you can only be an effective disciple if you have order in your life. 
Brothers and sisters, you cannot lead people not unless you are showing them what it means to become a real disciple. And the first thing that you have to put in your life is to become, to, to put order in your in, in the way you, you, you manage your resources, in the, may, the way you manage your time. One of, I've known of a lot, a lot of good people, intelligent people, successful people, well-placed in the corporate world. They have a lot of talents. I know they, can, they could have served the Lord. But we were not able to use them for one very simple reason. They simply don't want to. They simply don't want to doesn't mean sinasabi nilang ayoko mag-serve. They always say they want to serve. But they simply don't want to because they don't want to put priorities in order for them to be able to serve. For us to become real, effective disciples of the Lord, we need to look at our, uh, at our life and say and ask how the Lord wants us to use our time. And of course, Lagi nating mini-mention, two important areas of our life is time and money. Right? And I've been talking about time. You know? Alam nyo mga kapatid, sa, sa dami ng gadgets ngayon, meron ka ng iPad, meron ka ng iPhone, meron ka ng, meron ka ng tablet, meron ka ng Galaxy, meron ka ng lahat. Lahat ng mga schedule, lahat ng mga format ng calendars, pwede mo nang kunin sa web. Right? Hindi na natin kailangan pag-usapan paano mag-schedule. Isa na lang ang dapat nating desisyonin kung hindi mo pa ginagawa yon. Magdesisyon kang gawin yon. Magdesisyon kang gawin yon. And at the end of the day, it's your decision to actually do that. If you are part of the if you are working in an in in, a, in an office where training is an important uh, aspect of life, you know, marami sa atin, marami tayong seminars about how to manage your time, setting priorities. Alam na natin 'yan. But most of the time, the reason why Christians cannot put order in their life is because they don't want to make a decision. Or if they make a decision, they cannot stand by their decision. First things first, what are your priorities? What are your priorities in life? Of course, your work is your priority. If you're, if you're studying for your master's, your study is your priority. Your family is your priority. If you're not anymore spending time with your parents and with your siblings, that's a problem because they are your priority. Life in the Lord is your priority. Prayer time is a priority. Service and lingkod is a priority. Ruel, ang dami namang priority niyan. Paano natin pagkakasahin niyan? Mga kapatid, hindi bibigay sa atin ng Panginoon niyan kung hindi niya tayo bibigyan ng oras. But let me remind you of one thing. Yes, I agree. They may not fit in your time. That means that there is a need for us to manage our priorities very well. And I've known people who have sacrificed many things just for them to be able to serve the Lord. Just for them to be able to serve the Lord. Because as far as they are concerned, serving the Lord and having their life in the Lord is their priority. I can, I can cite a lot of examples, but let me mention just one. A brother was given an offer by company, by his company, a multinational company. He was given an offer to relocate his job to, to, to Jakarta, to Indonesia, to handle a regional position in the, in the office. And he really just struggled through that. He really just struggled through that. And he's got his family, he's got three children. Um, yeah, eldest at the time, his eldest was around 10 or 11 years old. So he needed the job. I mean, that was a tremendous opportunity. And after much prayer, he consulted leaders. And after much prayer, he said, I'm not accepting the job in Jakarta. Of course, sabi niya ganoon. Yung kanyang mga kaopisina were asking, nasisira na ba yung ulo mo? I mean, that was a regional position. Diba? You know what, what led him to make that decision not to accept it? Sabi niya ganun, kasi Ruel, I looked, I went to Jakarta, I visited their office, I looked at the environment, I said, the first thing thou that he said was this, how can I live my faith in this, in, this, in this place? The second thing he asked is this, can my family, can my children grow in the Lord in this place? The answer to both, question, to both questions were no. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. 
Does he, love, does he need the money? Of course he does. Of course he did. Does he need the position? Who would say no to a regional position compared to a local position? But his priorities were set right and he set it first. My priority is the Lord. If your life is in order, you can trust the Lord so much, you can say no to these things because you know your priority. I'm not asking you to say no to those offers. I'm asking you to set your priorities right so that the decisions that you will make will always be correct. That includes using your time and using your resources. Brothers and sisters, if you are not serving the Lord radically, you are not serving Him well. The only way to live our life is to live it radically. And sisters and brothers, it requires time. It requires time. And the way that God's mission can be fulfilled is for us, His disciples, to give it our best shot. Sabi nga nung, merong nagsabi na, um, one of our leaders in CYE before, who died at a very young age, um, I, I think you must probably have heard of a man named Rohel Plata. Okay? Rohel was my leader in CYA, and he, he, he had cancer at the age of 34, 35. He died at the young age of 37. And in one of our conversations with him, we're asking him, you know, Rohel, how do you really feel about this? I mean, of course, I'm depressed. I feel sad. I'm going to die soon. And he knows that. He, he, he was face to face with that at the time. He said, Sayang naman, Rohel. Kasi he was then the national director of CYA and he's doing a lot for the Lord. He was serving the charismatic renewal, the, 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 the national charismatic renewal as a youth coordinator, and he's doing a lot. And sabi ni Rohel, simply lang. Sabi niya, bakit ka nang hihinayang, bro? Kasi kukuni na ko ni Lord. Ne, sabi, sabi namin, kasi. Alam mo bro, ang dami-dami mong ginagawa. You're powerful, you're gifted, you're doing a lot of things. And then God will get, will get you. Sabi niya ganun, I came face to face with God on that. And you know what God told me? Sabi daw sa kanya ganun, Bakit Ruhel? Don't I deserve something like you to whom I've given a lot? Anong gusto mo? Kunin ko lang yung kung sino-sinong pipitsugin na walang gift? Hindi. I deserve better. I deserve you. My brothers and sisters, God deserves us. God deserves us because He has given you gifts. All you have to do is to put your life in order and He will be able to use you. Let's set our priorities right. Let's set our things right. You know? Let's set things right and let's set our life in its proper order so that God can use us. Second is money. Now, this is a sensitive issue. And I know you had a talk yesterday about uh, ma ma managing your finances. So I will not, you know, repeat what Randy has, has mentioned. He is the expert in that, in the field. I mean, you probably have, have heard him talk about that. But let me just say one, one thing, one principle about money and, ma and, 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 and putting our money, um, um, uh, uh, putting our uh, order in, 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 our, in our financial resources. First of all, we know it. Money, how much we have, is not the determinant, that doesn't determine who we are, our worth. So it's not about having a lot of money, but having a lot of money that you spend for the work of the Lord. It's not bad to earn a lot. I mean, I would want to earn a lot more. I would want to work. I would want to, 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 have, to, to provide more for my family. But if by doing that, I'll be spending my time in the office up to 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the evening, Forget about money. I have my other priorities in life. It's not worth it. It is not. Ruel, habang bata pa ako, okay pa naman, di ba? Pwede pa naman. Sabi ko sa kanya, bro, pag ginawa mo yan habang bata ka pa, hanggang tumanda ka, gagawin mo yan. It is not true that you will only do it now. You will only do, you will continue to do it even when you are old. Money doesn't determine your worth. Your relationship with the Lord and fulfilling the call that God has given you determines your worth. And your, a being, your, your ability to fulfill your mission in the work of the Lord determines your worth. Remember the parable of the talent when God said to the one who, who earned more, He said, well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, good and faithful servant. You earn more for me. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful to what God has given. 
come and join the Master's kingdom. God looks not on how much you have, but on how much you give with no matter how little you've got. That is what determines our life. Now let me just probably conclude with some um, conclu uh, some remarks about so some principles that we'd like to, to bring home in this. First of all is that this is, this is something that we know. Whatever you've got right now, brothers and sisters, that is not yours. This is not ours. My car is not mine. That is the Lord. As Job said, when, when, when the Lord took everything he's got, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. We are stewards of what we have. You're steward of your intellectual capacity. You're, you're a steward of your position in the office. You're steward of the money that you've got. You're stewards of the gifts and the talents that you've got. This is not ours. We are merely stewards of what God has given us. We must, you know, God owns them. God gave it to the, gave, God gave, gave it to us, and God can take it away anytime. We must make full and good use of them, for we will be held accountable at the end of the day. We will be held accountable for what you have done and how you have used the talent that God has given you. And this is always the principle of a disciple. Remember the widow's might. Remember the widow's might. I mean, yung mga umaten ng catch fire. That was the that was the thing, right? The widow's might. And I think, you know, to a certain extent, Bobby mentioned this in the in the catch fire. You know, um, good gauge is not how much you have, but how much you have left in your hands. A good gauge of a Christian is not how much you have, but how much you have left. In other words, what the the the, the thing that you don't have now is because of what you have given. You are stewards of whatever you've got. God wants, it to, wants you to give to, to those who don't have by serving and by loving the Lord. It is not what you've got, but it is how little you have left. Second, our goal is not to depend on our wisdom, but to seek the wisdom of the Lord in everything that we do. Given the example of that brother who did not accept that position, he sought the Lord's wisdom and said, Lord, what do you want me here? What, how do you want me to make a decision in this thing? Seek the Lord always. The first thing is that, um, you know, ang problema kasi pag marami tayong gadgets, for example, in setting our priorities, ang problema natin, yung gadget natin ang nagdi-decide kung ano yung priorities natin. Di ba? Meron na tayo. For example, if you have, it is not bad that if you have gone through the seven steps, uh, the, the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey, doon, sinabi na niya yung priorities natin eh. Diba? Spiritual, physical, family, and so on and so forth. It is good to have that as a guide. But it is also important for you to be able to seek the Lord and seek His wisdom. What is your priority in life? It doesn't mean nagtatrabaho ka, ang priority mo, work. Some of us probably need to spend more time with our family, with our parents, especially if our parents are aging. That's probably important. That's probably is a priority for you. For others, your priority is probably to earn so that you can support your brothers and sisters. That is your priority. But the important thing is not to just depend on what we think is right, but on what God wants us to do. Question, brothers and sisters. You have your priorities. You have your goals. You have your plans. Are these goals and priorities and plans According to, uh, are these goals and plans according to what God wants? Have you heard the Lord telling you that that is your priority? Or you merely said, this is my priority. The wisdom of the Lord is always available. All you have to do is to seek it. I'm not sure. If you, I mean, I hope you're doing well in your career. My question is this. Does God want you to be in that place? Does God want you to work there? Does God want you to do that? Are you being used by the Lord to do that? Well, okay lang naman ako, Noel, kasi malaki naman ang, ang, ang tithe ko sa lingkod. Malaki ang financial contribution. Siguro yun yung aking, yun aking goal. I'm not sure. It's really between you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord who can tell whether what you're doing is what He wants. Is what He wants for you. Trust God. Trust in the Lord. Sometimes we have to. If we know that this is what God wants, trust Him. Trust Him and entrust our lives to Him. Like the brother 
who did not who 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 rejected the offer to work in that in that position. He trusted the Lord and said, "Bro, the Lord will provide. I need more, but the Lord will provide." And I tell you, brothers and sisters, the Lord did provide for him. The Lord did provide for him. First things first: trust in the Lord. Trust that God is going to is going to um, uh, uh, to provide for you. But let me tell you something. When you trust in the Lord, expect that that trust will be tested. Expect that your trust for Him will be tested. That brother, for a while, for a while, almost said, "Mali yata yun decision ko." That trust, that faith, will be tested. But that will be tested not because it was wrong, but because God wants to prove to you. That I will be faithful no matter what, but you have to trust Him first. You have to trust Him first before you can say that you want that that uh, you are actually doing what He wants you to do. Next, seek advice of your of your leaders. Seek the advice of your elders when you make decisions. For example, don't just make decisions left and right, especially if those decisions will affect you know your life in the community, your life in the Lord. Bro, pwede wala na kasi ako makuhang trabaho, pwede ba ako mag-call center? Wala namang masama sa call center. Ang tanong ko ngayon, pag nag-call center ka ba, can you still fulfill your life in the Lord? Hindi eh. Pero alam mo bro, kailangan ko kasi mag-trabaho. Mas maganda kasi ang kita ko doon. Let me ask you something. Having, your, having a job is God's will, right? Serving and living in the community is God's will as well, right? If these two things will conflict with one another, do you think God is wrong in giving one? I don't think so. If two things are correct, God will make it work. But if it is not working and they are in conflict, ask yourself, is this really the plan of God for me? Either one, that job is for you, then Lincoln is not for you. Or Lincoln is your community that is the community where God wants you to stay. And probably you have to look for another job. Am I being too radical about these things? Well, brothers and sisters, that's the way God works at the, always. Radical is the only way we live our life as a disciple. And many times we have to make certain decisions that will not be according to how the world will look at, but how God will look at it. That is why napaka importante that you are connected to the Lord, because if You pray, when you, if you do it in prayer, everything will be there. God will always speak to us and guide us. So seek the advice of your leaders. Seek the advice of men and women whom God has put and anointed, anointed and put over you. Ask for their help. Ask for prayers from from sisters and brothers, and allow them to to uh, to give you their own inputs and suggestions. Be accountable to them, because your life in the Lord. Is you know is part of your accountability to your brothers and sisters. Don't think that kapag hindi ka na umaten dan lingkod, okay lang at naiintindihan namin. Hindi, kasi hindi namin sa naiintindihan, kasi alam namin ang gusto ng panginoon maging faithful ka sa buhay natin sa ating way of life. Pat natin pag-usapan tungo yon, kung madali lang pala siyang pakawalan. Bakit natin bibigyan ng isang araw mahigit itong ginagawa natin kung madali lang pala siyang igibab? Wag na lang natin tungo pag-usapan. Alam naman natin eh. Di ba? Alam na naman natin eh. Pero kaya natin pinag-uusapan yung way of life natin kasi may value to sa atin. If after listening to our way of life talks, you can easily give it up, then sister or brother, you probably are in the wrong place. This is not probably something for you. Because in lingkod ng Panginoon, we have a way of life that we want to, go, to hold on to. We want to uphold and we want to upbuild because this is where God wants us to be. Learn from mistakes. We know that, but this is some, the, the next thing is what I'd like to ask you: live simply. Simplicity is not what the world now dictates to us, right? Sabi nung asawa ko nisang araw na sa edge kami. Sabi niya, "Lam, BlackBerry four nine nine na lang." Ayan yeah, no. Oh nga, for a while. Oh nga no. Ayan yeah, yeah, no. But then again, paglampas namin sa billboard, sabi nasa ako. Kailangan ba natin yon? Sabi ko, hindi. Pero masarap tingnan, naka-blackberry ka. Yeah? At the end of the day, you will ask yourself, what do you need? 
And what do you want? What do you need? And what do you want? I'll ask you, an, I'll ask you a question. Is the gadget that you're handling right now, that you're holding right now, do you need it? Or do you simply want it? If you don't need it, why are you holding on to it? If you simply want to have it because others have it, why are you holding on to it? If what you are holding on is not something that you need for the work of the Lord, and of course for you know, your own life, fulfilling something that is good in your life is also part of your work in the life in the Lord. Being successful in your job is part of your commitment to your life in the Lord by using your talents. But let me ask you, do you need it? Do you want it or do you need it? One of the decisions that we've made many, many years ago when we start building up a family is this. Sa bahay namin, meron kaming TV, pero wala kaming cable. My eldest is now 21 years old. We're married for 22 years. For the past 22 years, we didn't have cable in the house. Okay? In today's world, that is unimaginable. And the classmates of my children will say, wala kayong cable? Para bang ikamamatay mo pag wala kang cable? Parang ganon, di ba? But they can't believe that we don't have it. And you know why we decided not to have cable? Ang mura na ng cable ngayon, di ba? Magkano na lang cable? 400 a month? Ang mura lang ng cable. I can give up something and I have 400 pesos extra. I can have my cable. My sister-in-law works in Sky Cable. I can probably have even discounted. But why don't we have cable in the house? Because me and my wife asked the question, do we need cable? And I said, I want it. I want it. I said, until such time that you say, we need it, we won't get it. 22 years na, hindi kami kumukuha ng cable. In other words, we don't need it. My children are okay. They're, I think they're normal. You know, I mean, there's no abnormality that I'm seeing in them because they don't have cable. But the good thing about it is this. I can always tell them to switch off the TV. And we can eat our dinner, family dinner together without the TV in front of us. Why? Because my children can actually say no to it. My children are not perfect. They still, every now and then, kaya yung mga anak ko, pag pumupunta doon sa aking mother-in-law, <gasps> parang wala, natin, cable na lang sila, ata, na, 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 di ba? Tatlong TV, may Nickelodeon yung isa, yung HBO, di ba? Kanya-kanya sila, yung isa, sports, you know? But okay lang yun. Pagdating nila sa bahay, balik sila sa reality. Wala silang cable, di ba? <laughs> Parusa ba sa mga anak ko yun? No. It was a decision to live our life simply. Now, brothers and sisters, let me warn you of something. The world will not stop giving us something that we thought we need. We have to stop and say, I don't need it. I don't need it. The world will never stop. I mean, tell me. Tell me. No unang lumabas ang iPhone, kala natin, wow, this is it. This is the best thing that happened in the world. Ngayon, anong iPhone na meron? iPhone 5, in a matter of how many years? Probably two, uh, three years, four years, may iPhone 5 na. Next year, hindi titigil ang Apple eh. Kukuha na, bago pa lang nila nilalunch yung iPhone 5, nagre-research na sila ng iPhone 7 eh. Hindi sila titigil kasi alam nila, bibili natin eh. Ano gagawin mo ngayon sa iPhone 4? Ano gagawin mo sa iPhone 3? Anong gagawin mo sa Blackberry? Eh, luma na Blackberry ngayon. Pag, dati no, pag naka-Blackberry ko, wow! Ngayon, pag naka-Blackberry, katatago mo kasi luma na yun. Hindi eh. siya so Blackberry ngayon, di ba? But again, the question is, how does a disciple live his life, his or her life? Is it because you want it? Or is it because you need it? Simplicity is using the resources that God gave you for the betterment of or for the fulfillment of his plan. Huwag niyo akong isusumbong kay Mon, ha? Baka mamaya, hanapan kayo yun mo. Sabi, ba't wala kayong mga iPhone? Pinag-give up sa amin ni Ruel, eh. <laughs> Hindi totoo yun. I'm asking you, come before the Lord and ask Him. Do you need it? Or do you simply want it? Lastly, work hard, 
Work smart, but brothers and sisters, do not forget. Be joyful always because that is what the Lord wants. Earlier this morning, we celebrated the first Sunday of Advent. And it is very good that, especially now as I was praying for the talk and for this presentation and I was listening to a lot of inputs about Advent, I'm saying this is what it is all about. No? Advent is about waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the coming of the Lord. And I'd like to encourage you, brothers and sisters. You are talking about way of life. I am presenting some thoughts and principles about personal order. I don't have the perfect plan on how to become the, the best, the most orderly person. Because as, I, as I've told you, I am a work in progress as far as that is concerned. But it is very important, especially during this season of Advent, to come before the Lord and ask Him, Lord, how can I give more of myself so that your mission can be fulfilled? How can I use my time, my money, the talents that you have given me, how can I use it so that I can fulfill the work that you have given us in Lincoln? How can I serve you more? How can I be a radical disciple for you? I assure you, my brothers and sisters, if you really come before the Lord and surrender our lives to him, he will reveal to you a lot of things. It will be painful at times. It will be painful in the beginning. It will be painful every time that you see your friends doing something that you can't. It will be painful because you are not used to it. But once you look at it from the perspective of a disciple, I am sure the Lord is giving you a different kind of joy. A different kind of joy. Father Herb Schneider in his homily earlier on in our Mass this morning says, The reason why people cannot celebrate Advent is because they are so addicted to the world who is counter-Advent. The world counters everything that Christians and disciples should do. Let us not conform to the world because the call of the Lord is for us to conform to his call. I would like to conclude this by paraphrasing the parable of the talent. You know the story of the parable of the talent. God has given you five. God has given you ten. God has given you one. God has probably given you more. When the Lord comes, what do you want to hear from Him? What do you want to hear from Him? Do you want to hear what He said to the servant with the one talent? He said, bring him out, take everything that he's got, give it to the one who's got ten, bring him out there, throw him into the fire. Or do you want to hear that beautiful word from the Master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful to the resources I have given you. You have used it to fulfill my mission. See the number of people who were evangelized because of the way you have used your time. See the number of women that came to know the Lord because you spent time with them instead of spending time with, somebody, with someone else or with, with another group of friends. See the number of work that Lincoln was able to do because you are generous with your material resources. See the number of, see the way Lincoln has grown. See the, the way the, the work of God has grown because you have served the Lord kahit na mahirap even if you have to sacrifice something. Brothers and sisters, you want to hear that from the Lord. You want to hear the Master say, because of what you have done, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful to the little I have given you. Come and enjoy the, 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 the reign of the Master. That is what we want to hear. Personal order is not a matter of you, not only a matter of using what God has given us, but using it for the purpose of the Lord, using it to do the work of the Lord, using it to fulfill the mission of the Lord, uh, the, our mission for the Lord, and allowing the Lord to do more through us. Let us come before the Lord and allow the Master to teach us how to put order in our life and how to use us even more for the glory of His kingdom. Amen.